morning. Yeah. Good morning. Well, from uh, last game at uh, Bournemouth, I think uh, we have some uncertainties with uh, Niles, who was sick yesterday with flu. And uh, we should have Koscielny back and we should have Montreal back in uh, available for Saturday. And uh, uh, maybe Ozil back as well. He should be back as well. So that's uh, the good news. How's Olivier Giroud? Olivier Giroud is one week away. And just finally for me, obviously Theo has now joined Everton. What were your abiding memories of him being Arsenal? Well, I would say that uh, my memories on Theo go for over 12 years, you know. Uh, personally, I'm very, very attached to Theo because he's a, a person who is a intelligent, has complete integrity for total commitment and focus on his job. And uh, I remember he arrived here at the age of 16 and went to the World Cup straight away. And uh, of course he scored important goals when you look back in big games. Uh, you speak about cup finals or, or Champions League games or the games against uh, in local derbies. You know, we have been outstanding performances against Tottenham. So. I uh, just regret what happened, but uh, he didn't play enough recently and I wish him well and thank him for everything he's done for us and we'll always be welcome here. Thank you for your time, Arsene. Can you tell us the latest on Sanchez to Manchester United? That is a story where you are well documented uh, apparently in the media, you know, so I have not a lot to to uh, add to that. It can happen, it can as well not happen. Really, still? Yeah. At that stage? Yeah, at that stage, yes. Do you think um, there is a chance he could ever play in an Arsenal shirt again? Yes, of course. If it doesn't happen, he will play on Saturday. I think United want to do it in the next, within the next 24 hours. How likely do you think that is? Uh, I've worked on transfers for 30 years, you know, so it is likely to happen, but uh, any moment, any uh, minutes, things can break down. It's that's, that's what, how the transfer market is. So as long as it's not over the line, you have to accept that uh, it can as well not happen. It's never, these kind of things are never guaranteed. And obviously a part of the negotiations it would seem involves a player coming the other way in Henrik Mkhitaryan. Mm. Is that your understanding as well? Uh, my understanding, yes. And what about him as a player? Do you like him? Yes, of course. Uh, if it's uh, a possibility, it's because I like the player. And he likes Arsenal too. You've probably heard his quote from 2009. If not, I can give it to you. Yeah, we played many times against him uh, when he was at Dortmund, you know, and uh, so he certainly appreciated the quality of our games and the way we play football. And uh, so uh, that's why uh, uh, certainly loves the club as well. Would wages be an obstacle at all because you have the structure here which apparently he wouldn't quite fit into given no, what the No, the wages would not be a problem. In terms of Sanchez, you said that he wouldn't go unless you found a replacement for him. Would, would, would that replacement be Mkhitaryan or would you still be looking? Look, uh, this would be an, an exchange of players uh, and I think uh, one will pre replace the other. And uh, are we still on the transfer market after that? Yes. Malcolm, any latest on that? No, I don't. I think uh, we are close to do that. Do you don't think that will happen in January? I uh, don't think so, no. And Obama Young, uh, given the pronunciation, mm. um, his agent apparently in London, is he a player that might be joining Arsenal soon? No, I have not nothing to add to that. We are, as I told you, you know, we are 
this kind of things, uh, it's better when it's secret and uh, when you don't come out on it and uh, when you announce it when it's over the line. And uh, apart from a deal we just spoke about, Sanchez Mikitarian could happen, yes. Nothing else is uh, close. Yes, because uh, character can be a very positive note and can be a very negative note, you know. So uh, I believe uh, of all you look at the achievement of a player during his career and uh, uh, usually when the career has been very positive, a character has been used in a positive way. There is well nothing to add at, uh, at the moment. In February? Yes, of course. So, no move out in January for No. Can I just ask you finally from me, um, Arsene, the, about the, the making public of the exchange with Mike Dean after that decision to give West Bromwich Albion a penalty, which we obviously realised was a bad decision. Do, do you feel happy that these exchanges are made public? No, I, uh, I uh, have nothing especially to add on that. I think. Uh, uh, the referees have their own uh, sanctions and uh, uh, they have to to live with that. And I I don't specially want people to be punished, you know. <laughs> I think just you uh, want them to make the right decision and to help them to make the right decisions. And uh, that's all I want. After that, what happens, uh, it's down to them how they have their own rules and I respect that. Surely after, in, in, in a, in a grown-ups game, after a debatable decision like that in the heat of the moment, it, it's fine to have an exchange of views with, with a referee. I don't know what is fine. I heard so much in the dressing room that has not been punished and so much worse than what I said that has not been uh, people got away with it, you know. And I heard a lot at half time as well where I never spoke in 21 years to any referees at half time in uh, the dressing room. So. I was quite amazed uh, by by the fact that I was charged. Thank you, Arsene. you regret now not selling Sanchez in the summer, getting more money for him and having this whole circus for the last three weeks? Look, uh, uh, it, uh, the problem was exactly similar uh, to what it is today. I only accepted to let him go if uh, somebody else comes in for him and it was not possible uh, in the summer. I would have done it uh, because it was not possible because it happened very late on the last day of a transfer market and uh, that's why it didn't happen. So overall, uh, uh, if it happens now, it's because somebody else comes in for him. Um, I was at Chelsea last night and I think it's debatable about whether the VAR cleared up things last night or not. I mean, mm. you, you'll have seen it over the last couple of weeks of your, your first leg of the semi-final of the League Cup use VAR. Um, from what you've seen so far, would you say been a success? It's uh, look. Uh, what you want is to improve the system that exists at the moment, and VR will contribute to improve it. Will be some hiccups at the start uh, of a functioning, certainly. Will you still need to clear up uh, the way it works? Yes, I agree. Uh, is that enough to renounce? I would say no. Personally, I'm still a fervent supporter of it and uh, I believe we have to move forward and uh, to improve the system certainly but we have to go for it and uh, you cannot imagine that uh, in the future it will not be uh, used we have to find the proper way to do it but it, it has to go that way. Last season you beat Palace at home and there was a famous scorpion kick goal from Olivier Giroud you've already beaten them at Selhurst Park this season so are you confident going into Saturday game? I'm uh, confident, yes, but uh, it's down to our performance, you know. Uh, Crystal Palace is in a, uh, was on a good run before we played against them at Crystal Palace and uh, since they have uh, had positive results again, so we have uh, just to focus on our performance and make sure that uh, we win the game. Uh, funny for me, it hasn't been the happiest of 2018s on the pitch <coughs> for Arsenal so far. Um, of course, it can always turn around, but... Are there days when you sit there and think to yourself, you know, maybe this will be my last season here, maybe I'm, you know, it's just not going to work out? And 
Uh, no, that's not the way I respond. I agree completely that uh, 2018 until now has not been uh, uh, very positive. But uh, I'm long enough in the job to know that what is important is how we respond to it and uh, to focus on uh, the performance. Uh, I, my personal situation is a bit uh, secondary to all that. What is important is uh, how the team responds and uh, what we make of 2018. Uh, we have many challenges, it's uh, difficult at the moment, but as well very exciting because we have uh, many uh, challenges in front of us and uh, we can come back in the Champions League and uh, we of course play the semi-final next week and after we have a Europa League as well, it's another target, so we have to uh, very quickly get over this transfer period because for us, especially, this period has been more disturbing than ever. Uh, because why? Because we have big players who are at the end of their contract and that's the first time it happens. But uh, we have uh, so influential players who have uh, uh, close to the end of their contract and it has been more destabilizing than ever. You just said, Arsene, that this has been more disturbing than ever. That, that means you must have been under a lot of stress has this been the most stressful period, the last couple of weeks? I don't know. I have no stress measurement uh, <laughs> uh, at all. But uh, it is, of course, it has been very... Uh, uh, it occupies you uh, on the pitch, off the pitch, and uh, at night as well, because you're very busy after that. Uh, I think I can deal with uh, the kind of stress it uh, creates. and. Uh, uh, the experience I have helps me to focus on what is important and uh, at the right moment. How close are you to confirming Jack Wilshire's future? Uh, we know what we want. We uh, want him to stay, we want him to extend. After that we have to find... Uh, he wants to stay. After that we have to find a satisfying financial agreement with Jack. That uh, is good for him. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. Arsene, reports coming out of Manchester suggest United are willing to pay Sanchez half a million pounds a week for the week. Is that a worry for football in general? Or is I wouldn't like to come out on the numbers because uh, that's a Man United problem. If they want to come out I'd, uh, with the numbers they offer to Sanchez. I uh, respect Man United because they generate the money they pay to the players by their own res with their own resources. So you have to respect that, and after that, it's down to them to know how much they have to they want to give to the player. But overall, Manchester United is a, a club very well managed financially, and uh, of course as well on the pitch. So that's why I don't have any problem with the money they pay. Look, uh, the mod modern football has created a kind of uh, of game where the best players in the world are regrouped uh, to a very small number of clubs. That makes football less unpredictable and much more predictable. And uh, I would say the financial resources become the biggest between the biggest clubs and the smaller clubs. This gap has increased in the last uh, five years tremendously. No, because we are professional players. I, I have no problem with Alexis Sanchez's attitude. He's been outstanding with us. He was in training yesterday, fully committed uh, and prepared 100%. You know, he's a guy who is... Uh, one thing you cannot question for Alexis Sanchez is his professionalism and uh, his commitment. After that, uh, he's 29 years old. Uh, the next contract will be, of course, very important for him. I mean, you asked him maybe Yes, financially, yes. Uh, that doesn't mean that you cannot compete on the pitch, but uh, that would not be an excuse big enough to not compete on the pitch. But of course, uh, uh, there is no mystery that uh, United and City have bigger financial resources. Is it, is it a case, though, that you might have to tweak the 
wage structure to maybe pay the top players more and, and have fewer players on the same sort of salary? If you know. Uh, that would need a longer explanation maybe than uh, just a short press conference. It's debatable but not feasible, uh, you know, uh, I do not want to come out with the numbers now because I feel uh, uh, that not be, would not be the right moment. We, we did the maximum we could afford to do and uh, one day maybe I will come out on that, uh, but uh, today is not the moment. Yep. Yeah, because it's deadline now. You know, uh, when I left him out at Bournemouth because I was scared that uh, we sit at Bournemouth on Saturday night and the transfer happened. It, it was already uh, uh, quite advanced, so uh, I didn't want to be in a position where I, I travel with him and uh, he has to go back and uh, doesn't play. If it's uh, yeah, we, as you said, uh, you well informed. You know, it's now in the next 24, 48 hours. It will happen or not. Thank you very much. Thank you, Austin. Can we take the mics out, please. Yeah.